Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> so today, I got something that um, I saw my husband doing yesterday, and uh, I figured it'd be something a little neat to show y'all. And I used to do this when I was a kid, and people would laugh at me and say it's not real. <laughs> but it's called dowsing or divining. And you hold these rods, and you tell where water is. Well, he has a, a even more uh, detailed way of doing it. So I'm going to let him take over and explain to you how to douse or divine and find water underground using the uh, two sticks. So a friend of mine years ago showed me this while we were doing some underground exploration out on a job site. And I was very skeptical at first and didn't believe it worked. After multiple times of walking around the field with multiple contractors and using this technique, we were able to find a lot of underground utilities that were not marked on the public or the private property, even after calling uh, the 811 dig service. So Betty wants me to share this with you today. A lot of you have seen this before, uh, divining for water, but it works on any underground buried utility or service where the ground has been disturbed and some sort of line placed under the earth. The second part of this is you'll see me stomp my feet um, to almost a cadence and depending on how many times I stomp my feet, uh, if I stop between two and three or three and four, that's indicative of how, line the, how far the line is buried into the dirt. So again, I was very, very skeptical most of the contractors that were on the walk with us that day also started making fun of this gentleman who owns his own company in South Louisiana. However, after about two or three hours of walking around a field, uh, like I said, after the utility companies had been called, 811 had been called, all the locates had been done, permits were assigned, we still had a lot of exploration to do. And had it not been for this gentleman uh, showing us this trick, we could have whole, had untold interruptions and uh, breaches in service for the surrounding uh, users of that service. So I'm going to share this with you. It's something that's helped me over the years. And uh, try it yourself. It takes a little practice. You kind of have to have your arms at a 90 degree angle. I want to use two bent rods. These are just little two little flags, pin flags that you find that the utility guys typically use. Uh, they're built at about 90 degree angles, bent about the same direction each way. Hold your arms at 90 degree angles, keep your uh, body loose, don't tense up. Use your pinkies to kind of create a circle. Hold it where the opposite ends of the rods are sticking kind of parallel with the ground. And I'll show you out here in, uh, in our front yard uh, kind of how this works. All right, so this house has got water, gas, electrical, cable or internet, and sewer, which from the best that I can tell all stems from the street. It looks like all the major utilities are buried in the street. And then there's branch lines out on each side servicing the houses on either side of the street. This is very typical in neighborhoods uh, to bear the utilities under or just outside of the street. Uh, they're all kind of buried at different elevations so there's not any clashes. Um, so you may pick up quite a few uh, indications of services. If you look over here to your left and my right, you'll see some clean outs for one closest to us and then one over in the neighbor's yard. Those cleanouts are typically associated with sewer lines anytime the sewer line makes a change in direction or a pipe wise into a trunk line. So we're going to test out here and see. We know that there's a change in direction somewhere around there, but there may be a trunk line that runs all the way up to the side of the house. The way the house is laid out, there's the utilities, bathroom in the front, and kitchen and bathrooms in the back. So they may 
have made a Y right here servicing the front of the house and ran a trunk line on back to service the uh, rear of the house, all of which would flow through here into the street. So let's see if we can verify first from this cap going to the street if that sewer line is connected that way uh, and we'll run it up to the sidewalk. You'll see me go back and forth a few times. direction on their own I'm not doing this and so that's an indication there's a line running parallel with these rods I'm going to back up try it again down here okay and we have it again so yep we're running right in line here let's try it on the concrete oh uh, yep here it is again. So it's running straight down through here. We know that. So now we're going to do something a little different. Betty, back up. I'm going to show you the second part of this. We're stomping your foot. Again, slow, easy steps. Don't tense up. And when you see me raise my foot and stomp it, you want to hold your balance on your left foot so you're not swaying around. And the trick is to get your right foot to create a rhythm you want to stamp it pretty hard, kind of like you're stomping a hole in the ground. And in between, I'm guessing two or three feet down here, you'll see that I won't move a thing other than my right foot, and these rods will go back straight. That's an indication between the counts of your foot going down and these rods going back. That's an indication of what the top of the pipe is. Let's see if we can find the depth. Here. Yeah. So just just that two feet, maybe a little 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 under. So if we took something and dug down kind of in a straight line here, we find this. Let's see if we can find a branch line. You can see there's another clean out up here in the flower pot. What it looks like to me is there's a Y that comes off and at least goes out at a clean out. Now from there, I have no idea. But let's see if we can find a line here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, about two and a half feet down. The grade's going up, so they probably laid this with about a eighth inch slope to a quarter inch slope per foot. The ground's growing up higher than that, so the pipe may get deeper as we go this way. There we go. Yeah, two and a half to three feet, maybe, maybe two foot eight. It was almost a third hit when that was straight down. Let's try it on the concrete. Two and a half feet there. Two, two and a half feet. Okay, we're going to go on up a little further now and see if there's a trunk line coming from this going towards the back of the house. Now, like I said, there's power and gas buried in here somewhere. You can't tell what line you're picking up other than the fact that we've got a general indicator here that there's a clean out. So I'm going to back up as close as I can to the house and start walking this way towards the neighbor's house. And you can see at the neighbor's house there's gas and power hooked up there. So more than likely they've got three or possibly four lines going through here because their water service may come in on this side of the house. Yeah, 
about three feet. So anyway, you can continue doing that all the way out. Your rods are going to cross anytime you get a breach in the earth. I don't know all the science behind it, and I'm not here to pretend to tell you that I do. We've always trusted in the years over technology, and when you see the line locate people come out, they've always got neat little electronic devices that'll tell you exactly where things are buried. And nowadays they're even so sensitive, they can get you within about six inches of the top of the, the service. So if any of you are interested in practicing this, just remember, Two rods, about two foot. Bend them about six or eight inches off each end. Keep them resting in your hands. You don't want to have any tension on them. They're just kind of resting there. Pinkies making a circle. And they just kind of swing around, right? You walk very calmly. Uh, don't try to walk stiff or slow uh, or stiff or fast. Uh, just very small consistent steps and then it takes some time to learn how to stomp your foot and get that depth but like I said I was not a believer in this until this gentleman saved us untold uh, breaches and service to surrounding folks and more than that saved us a lot of time on finding some buried utilities that was on private land that the service utilities would not come out and mark um, when you call the 811. 811 is a great service. Just like the commercials say, make sure you call them before you do anything. They are very helpful um, in getting you started. The next thing I can offer is just when you have a contractor come out to do your work, please make sure uh, that you emphasize that point about buried utilities because nobody likes to be without power, water, internet, gas, anything like that. All right. All right. So there you go. That's uh, that's how how dowsing or divining works. Uh, hope you go try it for yourself. It's pretty fun to do, and it's it's really amazing when 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 you just that it really works. It has something to do with the Earth's gravitational pull or some scientific method that I don't quite understand, but it, it does work. So I uh, hope you, this was helpful and um, hope you learned something and y'all have a wonderful night. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.